Hi everyone and welcome to our pre-recorded conference presentation. Sadly we couldn't be there with you uh, during the conference but I'm sure it's going quite well. So our conference presentation is titled Chunk Lectures, a new model for conducting online lectures within information technology higher education. My name is Dr Nick Patterson, I'll be presenting our research today and the rest of our team are Orlando, Michael, Guy, Judy and Alicia, all from Deakin University, uh, Melbourne in Australia. So a bit about our particular research. So traditionally lectures involved one authority figure on a particular topic and ultimately trying to transmit knowledge by talking for a long time to a group of students and with the hope that they'll be able to understand everything that was mentioned in say, that, that one two hour period. Teaching specifically in information technology subjects brings many challenges and various unique situations, especially as we kind of progress in the digital, digital information age. This particular field involves learning of complicated technical theory on how a piece of technology works, say externally, internally or externally, um, developing pieces of technology, as well as how to operate them effectively. The digital age of learning has brought many online courses to the forefront through the mechanism of what's often called uh, MOOCs or Massive Open Online Courses. And these kind of really represented through a few main players being FutureLearn, edX, Coursera, Khan Academy, that kind of thing. They've kind of transitioned in the past year to be not just MOOC platforms, but offering full degrees as well. Students can enroll in campus-based online courses and receive much of their learning via videos of those classes and sometimes I don't even have to venture into a physical campus anymore. And I think that's going to be changing more so in the future. So what we wanted to look at is where does, where do online lectures or lectures in general fit into the educational landscape? Will they likely be a continuing thing or as this online progression uh, of educational content moves forward, are they going to dissipate and be replaced by something else. Let's take a look at the primary aims of what this study were. There's three main elements really. Firstly, presenting student preference survey data, as well as analytics data with the relation to learning videos that we provided. Number two, we address the attention span issues within our cohort of information technology students specifically and kind of see where that fits in the landscape of all other disciplines and overall. Number three, propose a new model called Chunk Lectures for delivering online lectures within the information technology discipline for greater effectiveness. So the number of research papers on the topic of student, student attention span, most for the, for the most part are really related to observation methods as opposed to ours where it was, we, we gathered data from students specifically and their self-rated attention span and uh, really tried to gain some students' perspective about how they feel. We're not making the claim that both are pretty much equal or comparable in terms of both research data collection methods, but just providing a different perspective, um, being the student's perspective, just to see how they feel. And you can decide whether you feel it's valid or invalid. The chunk lecture model we propose in this study is primarily for information technology cohorts who are studying online. But really, there's no, no reason other disciplines couldn't utilize this also. So we also feel it could be utilized for other disciplines in order to produce more effective learning outcomes through managing attention span more effectively. There might be some elements you see in here today which you're, you've been thinking about or it might trigger you to kind of change the way you do uh, education, for instance. Some of the related work. So this first one was from the author Bradbury, and in this study they found that several institutions have reduced their lectures to 15 minutes in length based upon the common knowledge and consensus that there's a decline in students' attention span within 10 to 15 minutes into lectures. So it's happening quite quickly. This other author, with it, which is a bit more older research, Hartley and Davies, 
which kind of shows things haven't really changed that much in comparison. The first one was 2016, this is 1978. Research has shown that the number of students who actually are paying attention begins to drop massively after 15 minutes, which results in a loss of retention of lecture material. Additionally, the study showed that students remembered 70% of the information presented in the first 10 minutes of a lecture and 20% remembered information presented in the last 10 minutes. So it's pretty interesting. It's kind of revolving around that first 15 minute period it seems to be critical. And then even then they're talking about, it's really about that first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes. So we're going to try and figure out why that might be. It might be just related to attention span. The first 10 minutes, they're keen to kind of understand and listen. And the last 10 minutes, they're probably ready to get out of there so that their attention span's peaked up again. So this kind of revolves around a bit around our solution per se. So we looked into this element called chunking and time boxing. And we looked at three puzzle approaches to kind of apply to lectures. The Pomodoro technique, which is a 25 minute focus session plus five minute intervals, sounds quite quite good and it's quite popular this one. Uh, the spaced learning approach being three 15, 20 minute sessions plus a 10 minute interval. As you can kind of see as we progress here, a lot of it's around taking breaks and kind of refreshing yourself and then going back into the content. And then an approach drawn from behavioral and laboratory studies for long-term potentiation, LTP, and long-term memory, LTM, encoding whereas time patterns are three separate 10 minute sessions. So it's really, most of them are revolving around anywhere from uh, 10 minute sessions to 25 minute sessions and ensuring there's breaks in between. That seems to be critical to boosting attention span and uh, the real uh, possibility of getting as much uh, knowledge collection as possible for the students or the people in general who are studying. So the methodology for our study, what we tried to do here is uh, sample the students we had access to. So we teach information technology at our university and so it made sense that we utilised uh, that cohort of students. So we looked at domestic and international students enrolled in undergraduate IT sub, uh, subjects within a IT degree across our university, which is a multi-campus uh, university in Victoria, Australia. So we've got um, a campus in Geelong, a campus in Melbourne, and then we've got the Cloud Campus, and then there's one other campus which is uh, in Warrnambool also. Students were eligible for inclusion if they're enrolled in SIT 105, Critical Thinking and Problem Solving, which is a subject really revolving around requirements analysis for projects and planning out projects, and they're given a project to kind of analyze, and then they put forth a, they develop a solution in essence through some coding. So it sits within the Bachelor of IT and the Bachelor of Cybersecurity degrees, which offer both online and uh, on-site classes as well. Then we just wanted to make sure that the students could actually read and understand English, which most of, them, most of them would because it's a requirement to get into Deakin University. And they provided consent uh, through response to the survey and they're actually over 18. So a few different um, check, check marks before they could actually be part of the study. So we conducted an online survey through the, the tool SurveyMonkey and it comprised of four domains is how we, how we essentially structured it. So student perspectives of learning via video media in the form of short pre-recorded audio visual recordings and longer front of room audio visual recordings. Number two, a self-evaluation of their attention span, Likert rating scale, um, ranging from one to five, uh, strongly agree to strongly disagree. Uh, part three, student, pre pre student preference for video duration. And number four, self-rating the influence of video recordings for completing uh, assessment tasks and for the comprehension and retention of knowledge. So I just wanted to clarify, we did for the video recordings that we provided, we did sh very short two, two to three minute kind of uh, short videos which captured key elements of knowledge from that, that lecture that week. We also recorded the entire lecture theatre being uh, from the back of the room. So you would see the students, the lecturer, um, the projector, and then we provided the university uh, provided recording, which was uh, the lecturer's audio over the top of uh, just the, the lecture slides. And that's all they would see. 
Now, last point, all video resources are available to students after campus-based classes via the Learning Management System, which is what we call uh, Cloud Deacon. And I think it's based on a platform called Desire to Learn. So in this uh, slide here, we want to describe a bit around those uh, video recordings, which I've got just gone through. So we had 11 face-to-face on-site classes or lectures, and those were, these were audio visually recorded and uploaded to their learning management system. Number two, we had students had also access to 11 short premium quality videos. These are the, the two minute duration kind of videos I talked about, very high quality and animated um, key aspects of the knowledge given through the, the traditional lecture, which was a, a one hour lecture. Number three, as well as eight of what we call the front of room lecture recordings, as I mentioned, where it's we're capturing uh, the lecturer, uh, the lecture slides, and uh, the students. So the whole room in essence. And those are approximately 70 hour minutes in length. Student attentiveness. So attentiveness was measured subjectively using self-reported items in the survey and objectively uh, using the duration each student played a particular video recording of the lecture, as well as the short, the short learning videos also. So it's kind of a combination of the survey, the self-reported items, and then we looked at, tried to get another source being the analytics around the, the videos that they're watching and see if they're actually watching them or not. Data was captured as viewing time, the total duration of videos, the number of unique views, and cumulative frequency of plays. Responses from the surveys, video access and viewing duration data and evaluate results were analyzed and reported using frequencies and percentages. So everything there sounds and makes sense aside from uh, the evaluate option. That's essentially a end of semester re uh, report that the students do individually of this study. We had access to that and got ethics approval to use that also. So we're able to cross and compare what they're reporting in the self-reporting survey during uh, the class time and then also what they reported at the end of the semester also. Okay, so let's get into some of the results and look at response rate. So we had 496 students eligible to participate in the study and about 144 responded positively to the invitation. So it's about a 29% response rate. With 116 of those all uh, completing all the requirements for analysis, and that being a 23% response rate. So that came out because some uh, all the questions you could skip over if you wanted to. It was up to them if they wanted to answer them. Although 23% might be considered a relatively low response rate from such a large cohort of students, um, when we look at that end of semester evaluate report, um, we can see that often they don't respond too well anyway. 2017, we had 17% response rate, and 2018, a response rate of 22%. So pretty much on par for the most part. I think like once they finish their subjects, they're not really wanting, wanting to give um, any details about how it went unless it was like really good, or even then it's more about how badly, if it did go badly, how badly it was for them. Sometimes they give positive responses, but mostly, mostly it's if something went wrong. But we, uh, we're sitting on par with the university-led uh, survey. As demographic data was not collected, the age, gender, and percent of online, on-site, domestic, or international students in the sample can't be re reported, unfortunately. Okay, attentiveness. Let's look at these results. Results of the survey item related to student self-perception of the longest duration they were prepared to watch a video without interruption is shown in the figure to the right. As shown, students reported three peak times being two minutes, uh, six to 10 minutes being the highest and 11 to 30 minutes. So we're sitting on around about six to 10 being the most popular, which is uh, linking into, it's even less than what we thought about from that related work that we looked at before. Critically, student attention span drops after 30 minutes of video play and subjectively we suggest that 10 minutes is the main point in time in a normally distributed curve. In terms of the spread, the optimized, uh, optimal self-perceived duration lies within the range of eight to 30 minutes. So most likely that 20 minute period would probably be, 15 to 20 minute period would be optimal. 
So regarding the figure, the first peak for two minute two minute length video recordings may well indicate responses from 15 to 2 15.2 percent of the students who favor short premium quality learning videos of two minutes in duration over recorded lectures of 90 minutes in duration so they're preferring at least from what we can tell from the views that they're preferring the short videos versus the the longer lecture recordings regarding a third point about it attendiveness and the results here. So results will be objective data taken from the learning management system and Kaltura, which is our version of YouTube at the university, um, indicate what actual students actual attentiveness was displayed in the table. So this is we're taking video analytics data and making a an assumption about that or trying to see kind of what their what their feelings are through their actions in a way. So for the recordings of the front of room lecture recordings, eight students hit the play button average 63 times. So these are the lecture recordings which shows the entire room. They weren't watched very much. On average, the duration of each video was 79.79 minutes, 75 minutes. Well, 29% of those play button hits led to a video recording that was played from beginning to end. The average view time was only 22.3 minutes which fits in with the research. Regarding the short videos, where well, there's 11 of these, statistics review, uh, retrieved show that on average, 260.9 total plays across these videos in which, in which last an average or uh, duration of one to three minutes, 1.3 minutes. Then lastly, the Echo 360 recordings, again, which are the uh, just the PowerPoint slides and the audio over the top of them from the lecturer. We went 11 of those. They saw an average of 45.7 players across these videos with each video total length being an average of 80.2 .80 minutes. So you can see the results in the table there to the right. We've got average total plays, average, average completion, average view time, average total length. And these are broken down into the front of room, the short video and the narrated lecture slides. So to combat this, our proposed model uh, focuses on online lectures of two hours uh, in duration with a set break with set breaks or intervals with alternate activities during this time period so ultimately trying to break up that monotony of two hours um, so students can kind of reset and boost their engagement to try and increase attention span whilst we don't try to define any set time breaks for instructors to use we present three approaches which you could uh, play around with in terms of chunking your online lectures or time boxing these are the three popular ones we talked about earlier, the Pomodoro technique. So this could be a 25 minute uh, initial session, break up for five minutes, continue again for another 25 and keep going to you to your lecture, whether it's, whether it's an hour or two hours is complete. Uh, the space learning approach is three 15, 20 minute sessions plus a 10 minute interval. So you can try that out and to see what the difference is between the Pomodoro and that approach, which one might be better. And then in terms of LTP and LTM, timed uh, time patterns of three separate 10 minute sessions. This might evolve as you've got, uh, if you might have a one hour or 10, uh, two hour lecture, you might just aim for uh, multiple 10 minute sessions with breaks in between. There's no clear evidence as to which is best out there for these approaches for online learning and online lectures or even physical on campus lectures. Uh, we're promoting flexibility and suggest rather than define to instructors the best approach to use for your specific cohort or discipline, you try out one of these three approaches and see uh, which one's best or even come up with your own and you might be able to publish some work about which approach that you come up with is the best one and why. In conclusion, online lectures, uh, either as recordings of on-site classes or specifically developed for short videos, are a prominent feature of 21st century learning. If we look at MOOCs specifically, and even some of the, the online degrees which are now offered as well, they're broken down into various steps and activities. So you're often not seeing video recordings of any great, great length. So they're not gonna have uh, hour long video recordings for the most part, at least with future learn, the most you can probably see is like five minutes, but they have multiple multiple of those videos throughout a week. So you might have 10 videos of five minutes each for a week. It varies. As that data suggests, 
students indicate they do not have or exercise an attention span to actually watch a 90 minute video of a lecture in one setting, they're not really wanting to do that, at least what the data says. Thus, chunking one's learning and allowing for breaks is advised to kind of try and get them to re-engage after they lose that attention span and hopefully get back into the learning session. As the optimal self-perceived duration lies between uh, eight to 30 minutes, try to aim for somewhere in about 20, 20 minutes might be good and then you can have a break and then re-engage them after a short break. Students should be advised to pause, reflect, take notes and rest prior to continuing, or you might be able to come up with other activities uh, if you've got on-site um, classes, for instance, it might be a discussion with the person next to you or just a discussion in general, or they might just have a break and do some exercising, something like that, just on the spot. We've proposed a model for conducting online lectures to improve the process using a chunk model with three possible options that are on offer or develop your own. Future studies are going to focus on determining what students actually do when they take breaks from learning materials, especially in the online spaces. We don't know too much what they're doing when they are switching off after, say, like that 20 minute uh, period. It'd be good to find out some more data about why they're switching off and what they're doing instead of that. Are they coming back at another time? And try to come up with strategies to kind of uh, combat that if it's something that maybe we're doing wrong. Thanks very much for your attention and hearing our research from Australia. If you have any queries or questions about the research, you can check out our publication, which will be coming about two weeks after the conference, I believe, or you can contact me on the email below, nick.patterson at deacon.edu.au. Thank you.